uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order at six minutes uh, after five. Uh, we have uh, Vic Dwyer with us, Paul Seminara, uh, Randy Drury, and Stephanie. Stephanie. I'm sorry, I'm with Stephanie Smith. Um, and Steve Jufrey. Is there anybody I missed? It's amazing what this program does, isn't it? There's no hiding. So welcome everybody. Um, Sarah, any amendments to the agenda? Uh, nope, just what I put in last night. So the agenda as sent last night should be fine. Okay, okay. So with that and only three minutes late, I'd like to recognize uh, Stephanie Smith from the state hazard mitigate, she's a state hazard mitigation officer for Vermont Emergency Management. And she's gonna tell us about the process and the cost for the town participating, participating in the FEMA buyout of 28 Ridge Road. Stephanie, you're on. Hi, thank you. Uh, so yes, I'm Stephanie Smith. I'm the state hazard mitigation officer. Um, I, you guys probably worked with Lauren Oates a few months ago. Uh, she has since left, so I'm, I'm filling in for her and new in this position. Um, but there were a couple of questions about the buyout, so I want to make sure that I can, I'll give you a quick overview, and then I want to make sure that you guys have time to ask me any questions that you have about how this process works. Um, so the grant has already been awarded, which is good. That typically takes a decent amount of time. So it's been awarded. Um, on our end, we, our finance advisor had reached out um, for a couple of things she needed. And the next step on our end is really to get a, a subgrant agreement in place uh, with, between the state and the town so that we can do reimbursements. Um, and in terms of the funding for the town, so there's, there's no cost uh, to participate in for the town. Um, and the town is actually eligible for 5% of the total project cost in funding to administer the grant. So Sarah's time putting in um, administering the grant can be, can be reimbursed up to 5% of the total award. Um, the process for that has changed slightly. So uh, I've been working with FEMA on exactly how they want to see that request come from the town. So you, you haven't made that request yet, but I'll be, I'll be letting you know how, how to access that funding so that the town can have the money to, to manage the work. Um, Hi, Liz. And then one of the questions is around how the how the funding is actually distributed. So once that subgrant agreement is in place with the state, um, it's typically a reimbursement based program. So you'll do the appraisal, for example, is the, the first thing um, the first thing that will happen. You know, the town will hire someone to do an appraisal of the property, um, and that appraisal. Typically, the town would pay for that and then would request reimbursement from the state. So the state would would supply 75%. Um, and then we have match funding for this. So you, the community would get the 25% match as well. Um, and there, there is an option if the if you guys are concerned about uh, fronting that cost, there is an option to request funding in advance. So in, before you pay the invoice, you can reach out to our finance office and get funding in advance so that you, the town doesn't actually have to have to put forward any of that funding if that's if that's a concern. Uh, can I just interrupt you for a sec? Yes, so, go ahead. I don't think it's the, and maybe you're, maybe you're gonna get to it, and I'm sorry to steal your, your thunder. Okay. We're not worried about the cost of the appraisal. Okay. You can cover that, but if it comes to asbestos abatement or filling in septic systems or Mm -hmm. Who knows what else? We've been, we've been through this before. That's where it could be a pretty substantial, uh, pretty substantial bill. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely interested in knowing about that. What is the expected in the normal course of events? What's the expected turnaround time? We submit the paid invoice. Mm -hmm. Is it thirty days? Is it? It's. I, I believe it's actually five days. Five business days um, oh, okay. for the reimbursement. But if, if there is a larger bill that comes in, it can be, it can be advanced. So you wouldn't have to, if, if there ends up being asbestos and there's a large bill, um, first we would have to request a cost overrun from FEMA if it's in addition to what we've budgeted for, if we need additional funding. Oh, no, I understood, yeah, I understood yeah. that. But then it could, be, um, it could be advanced if it ended up being a larger bill, yeah. Yeah. So 
the, the summary of this is if everything goes as planned, there should be no cost to the town. Mm -hmm. And um, if we don't choose to go for the advanced process, which we might not do on a smaller bill, but might do on a larger bill, mm -hmm. um, we could expect a turnaround on the money within 10 days. Yes, that's correct. That should make you smile, Dorinda. <laughs> Check and barely clear in that period of time. Yeah, she's smiling. Questions, uh, board members? Well, what about, does Sarah have any questions? Because Sarah has always been who's been managing these things and there's a lot of steps. So she's really the person most familiar with uh, the upstairs of getting the stuff done. Peter, can I, can I talk? Yes. Okay, so Stephanie, I guess my concern is uh, when I'm reading the grant, it says the federal award is 102,000, which is 75% of the total approved project cost of 136,000. Does that, how uh, much does that go toward Jennifer Evans, toward the property owner, or is that supposed to, I mean, what does that 136 cover? Yeah, so I can, I can send you, do you have the application with the budget? That breaks it down. I can I send. I have the you. application. I have. I have what you. I have your the statement that you gave the terms and conditions. Okay, so I can I can send you the original application, which has the different line items um, broken down. So the actual for the property appraisal. Oh, let's see, for the purchase of the property, we were estimating about one hundred and ten thousand, which is what will go to the property owner. But we don't. It'll depend on the appraisal. That's what we've budgeted. Okay. Um, but depending on what the appraisal comes back as, that's. That's what we have budgeted for that amount. So you have 110,000 so, and then, the, so that's my concern. So my concern is that you've got 110,000 budgeted for, is that supposed to represent 75% of what you're going to give the property owner or is that the total amount you're gonna give the property owner? That's, well, it was, the budget was for the total. Okay. Yes. So um, she walks away with 100, that leaves us with, um, 30, 26,000, maybe another 34,000 to, mm -hmm. to deconstruct, to do a, send out RFPs for an asbestos. I know there's going to be asbestos, remove the asbestos. Mm -hmm. This is, this is why I wanted you to talk to the select board because that number 136 doesn't come close to deconstructing a house, removing the material, you know where I'm going, right? That's a big project. Yes. Yes. So we, we have in the budget right now, 2,000 for lead and asbestos survey and removal if that's needed. Um, if, if that figure does go well above that, depending on what we, what, what we find out before you actually do the lead and asbestos work. So based on the survey, if it looks like it's gonna be 10,000, um, we can request additional funding from FEMA. Okay. That's where so, I wanna stop you because when we did this yeah. last time, the bids we got for asbestos removal were $40,000 and that was for a sink and a little bit on a roof. Okay. I, number 2000 doesn't seem to go anywhere near 40,000 to me. And that was seven years ago. Right, so it's, it's possible that it comes in higher. And part of, the, part of how these, these grants work, it's, it's voluntary for the homeowner, it's voluntary for the town. And if there's something that happens that they just decide it's too much and you don't wanna go forward, you can make that decision at some point. It, it helps that there's, we have the ability to cover the match for this, usually homeowners are, are more concerned if they're the ones paying for the match, which is sometimes the case, uh, if, if the cost ends up being too high. But if, if we have a survey come back and it says it's gonna be 40,000 and asbestos removal, we'll have to go back to FEMA and talk to them about it at that point before any of the work actually happens to right. get that approved. Get, excuse but, me, do we get estimates for all this work before we actually start so we know that we're okay before we begin? Yes, yeah, so the, the appraisal is usually the first step, but um, they'll, I, yeah, after that, you would be doing a, a lead and asbestos survey, if before that's a concern. Closing, before closing, Stephanie? Would we do the lead and asbestos survey before closing? And then- I think, I think it usually is before closing. I can, let me check on that and I'll get okay. back to you. Because my concern is that the town, that this property right. owner is gonna walk away with, uh, with, a, with a chunk of change to, to do what she needs to do. And the town is going to be set, stuck with a very, very expensive project that it now owns. The town will now own the house. And now the mm -hmm. town is going to have to 
mitigate the asbestos, remove the asbestos, uh, just deconstruct the house, remove the house, remove, fill in the septic, and that's way, way more than $26,000. Okay. So and you know, I mean, you're saying the town has a chance to back out, but the town won't know whether or not to back out. If, right, if the, if the property's already purchased, it's too late at that point. Right. So I'll, I'll find out if it's, if that typically would take place before. I think, I think it could, and that would not be a problem, but let me, actually it has to, yes, it has to, because they need a clean site letter for the purchase. Uh, well, that's not how it worked last time. Term. Last time mm -hmm. we transferred the property and then, and then we started the asbestos room, and the, the a survey. And okay, then, well, yeah, let me let me dig a little bit on that and make sure that that's going to work out the way that makes more sense to you, which I fully support and understand. So just don't want to be responsible for sticking the town with a big expensive project. Yes, so understood. The wages of our town clerk and select board assistant. Cover I'm sorry. <laughs> no, was, I'm just I didn't actually hear what you said. <laughs> well, I missed well. it. <laughs> okay. I, I, I guess I guess you know we're we're looking you in the eye over the over the computer line here, mm -hmm. and you know we need to be comfortable that we're going to be okay in this. This is not the year for us to have some surprise financial surprise financial disaster mm -hmm. um, for all the reasons that we're all aware of. So um, when do we when do we need when is the first go no go thing on this? I, well, the first the first step is typically once we have our subgrant agreement in place to do the appraisal, um, and then the the property owner needs to be happy with that amount and ready to move forward at that point. Okay. Um, so, and then I'll I'll find out about whether we can we could do the lead and asbestos at least surveying right after that. So have we? What remind me what the status is right now? Have we have we accepted the grant? No. So That's it's. Great. The subgrant agreement is not in place yet. So I think I just looked up, um, looks like my, our, the woman who manages our financials sent out a couple of questions that she needs answered to put the subgrant agreement together. So I'm not sure if Sarah, if you've responded to those yet, um, but the next step is the subgrant agreement. So you'll get a chance to look that over, make sure that everything makes sense to you and sign that um, okay. before, before moving forward. Okay. And you have to have that in place to do any of the reimbursement. So that's that's yep. the next step. Yeah. Other questions, anyone? I have a quick question. Um, does uh, so if there's a mortgage or a lien on the house, does does that get do you pay that off directly first, and then the owner gets whatever the rest of the money is? And what if the lien is more than what the house for whatever reason, you know, <clears throat> had a home equity or something like that? Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever dealt with what if it's more, so we'd have to we'd have to handle that if that ended up being the case. But it's the same. The closing process is very similar to any sort of closing. So we will cut a check for seventy five percent of the property purchase. We'll work with the those who are the the match that's being covered. They'll cut the check for the for the remainder, um, and they'll have to pay off any mortgages that they have on the property from that amount. They've got to give us a clear title. Yes. Did we, um, Sarah, did we lose money the last time we did this? Um, no, but we very had, uh, the reason why I'm hesitating is because the bids for the asbestos were so high. And that's why I keep focusing on that. When I, we got to $40,000, everybody, it, the two, we had three bidders, two were $40,000 almost on the nose. And one was Jason Merrill, which was $20,000. And we went with Jason because we didn't want to be in a place where we were not going to be reimbursed for that $40,000. And I'm not saying that Jason cut corners, but he probably would not have done what he, what the other guys would have done. And we got a real nasty gram from the state of Vermont um, saying, next time we're going to be watching you in, on asbestos removal. It's like, okay. So um, I just, I, that, that's why I'm concerned because in that case, the deal was done, the homeowner walked away with the check and the town had this huge responsibility and we were very nervous about not being able to get it paid, especially now in this case, we're at the end of the grant run. Well, I'll say there's there's funding additional. If we, if we need to request additional funding from FEMA, we do have a 
through funding uh, okay. within this grant round to cover. We had a couple of other buyouts that dropped out. So we have a decent amount of funding available um, if there is a need for an overrun. Okay. Well, all I'd like to say is, again, reminding everybody that the reason we got into this is to solve a to solve a problem. It's been a problem for the town. It's been a problem for the homeowner. It's been a problem, 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 problem. So it's worth resolving. We don't need another park over there, Mary. I don't think so. There won't, there won't be a second. There won't be a second Skinner Park. <laughs> I have to take my kids. I, I just I I think it's worthwhile doing. I I just want to make sure. I just want to be careful every step of the way and watch this like a hawk, Sarah and Dorinda and me, to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, and Stephanie, to make sure that it's working out the way we expect it to work out. So with that, I think we, I think we, uh, we wait to get the sub-grant agreement, we review that, and if it is what we expect it to be, we sign it, and uh, then we take it step by step after there, after that. How soon will the sub-grant be coming to us, Stephanie? Um, it's, it, it might be a little bit of time yet. I'll have to check in with Melissa, but I'll, I'll remind her, um, for this one. I, Sarah, did you get back to Melissa's email? Did you see her email come through? I did. It was a while ago. And I think there were some really basic questions about duns and things like that, which I thought yeah. we answered, but maybe, you know, I don't know with all this COVID stuff, it, it could have been yeah. answered in my living room. So, <laughs> okay. I will. So I'll check in with Melissa if she has everything she needs, um, that I'll just, I'll make sure she has everything she needs so she can move forward. Okay. And then we can, we can get that to you guys. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Thank you, Stephanie. All right, thank you. Thank you if Stephanie. you have further it. questions, I'm you still here. And drive. You didn't have to drive too far to do this, did you? No, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah, I'm around anytime you have questions that pop up and we can walk through this one step at a time as we go, so. All right, thank you so much for coming to the meeting. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. More discussion about class four section of Notch Road. Paul Seminera. Unmute yourself, Paul. Well, now the leaves are out. Uh -oh. Where's your Paul? I think he disappeared. No. Uh -oh. Yep, there he is. No video, but voice. That's all right. You there, Paul? Not working. It is my reception is not great, so I might kill the. Uh, Put your picture back up. Uh, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, kill a kill a video and see if that makes it better. Visual here. This, did, this so video is killed. Yep. Not that we don't like looking at you. How are you doing now? Paul, Paul, Paul. He was out what, he's coming back what, in. Steve, I guess you're the lucky one. Yeah, why don't I step in? Well, he's uh, doing, trying to come back. Okay, but let's let's have Steve start and see if he can get back in. There he is again. Paul. <laughs> Connecting to audio. Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. You guys there? Yes, we yeah. are. Can you hear us, Paul? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, no, you're, you're okay. Sorry, the leaves aren't helping anything over here in the notch, so I apologize. I okay. can hear you guys. Okay, well, 
listen in. We're going to have Steve fill in for you. Still nothing. No. No, you're not. You're not coming in very good. Nothing there. yet. Yeah, you're broken up. So, so let me let me just give a brief. <laughs> Tech, technology is great when it well, works. Can it? Can you hear me yet? Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the big question: When can we get back to the to normal in person meetings at a socially safe safe distance? That's my my biggest gripe. I don't know, but you're coming can, in. Good, I can Paul, see us so sitting at our sitting at our lounge chairs out in the parking lot behind the town hall. There we go. Well, I'm, I'm up in my deer stand as high as my property goes. So here we are. All right. Okay. Well, go ahead, Paul. Well, I'm I'm gonna. Uh, Steve, do you want to just go ahead and do a quick brief of of everything or do you want me to get started what's up to you well we were, we're talking about the notch road uh stuff okay. first so um I, I mean i can i can give a brief overview of what we from our last meeting um we had discussed uh, at the well uh, life management the state area of trying to expand that parking lot a little bit to accommodate a few more cars um paul and i looked at that i i think that would would be easily done to uh, accommodate just a few more cars uh paul's going to mark it out and then have another meeting with the state uh guy that's tim appleton and and then the other uh thing that we had decided to do is to put in a small parking area uh, down near the entrance to the pit. Uh, we can put in a small area there uh, pretty darn quick uh, with very little cost uh, to accommodate six cars. Uh, so we thought we would do that and Lee had talked to us about he will be doing something for signage. Who will, Steve? You're Lee. Who? Lee Rossberg. Uh, I can't hear him. You can't hear me? No, I can hear I can hear you. Okay. Who can't you hear? I can't Liz? hear anyone. Uh-oh. You must have spiked us. So So that's the brief overview anyway. So we would have a net gain of eight parking spaces. Two up, yeah. two up of the existing parking spot and six down at the pit. That's correct. Yep. And sign eight, eight or nine, you know, it depends on how people park that area up the wildlife management. If people came in there and paid attention, they could probably get six or seven cars in there, but all of a sudden they're six feet apart and there's only five cars in there so but we think yes we can have an additional eight or nine vehicles between the two steve i'm gonna piggyback off to you and, but so every one of the board what our other plan with this is uh in in the next month is to come Oh, this is not working. We, we really kind, kind of a timeline that we'd like to present to the class for a second, but not. We know that there's. Paul. Yes. Uh, you're not coming in very good at all, Will. We're just going to. We You just come in broken up, and then all of a sudden you're clear, but we're, we're not getting anything that you're saying. Okay. So, so I think just Paul to, had... just to just to summarize what 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 Steve said, the idea is to try and improve the situation up there, spending very little time and very little money. Um, we don't have time and we don't have money, so we're going to try and make the situation better the best we can. Can we? And hope that the conservation commission can create a trail from. Uh, the pit parking lot 
possibly up around the up around the pit and get permission from the landowner to go across their land so that there would be a hiking trail that didn't involve hiking up the road. But whether that can happen or not, I don't know, but that would be a goal. Because there is a lot of potential in the future to create even more parking uh, where the town pit is. Plus you get an extra half mile hike uphill. What happened to the um, guy who, who volunteered to let there be parking on his property? He changed his tune. Yeah, yeah, and that where he was where he was talking about uh, allowing us to create that parking and turn around really wasn't advantageous uh, for us. But uh, I think there's some potential for long range. And and in that last meeting, I'll just briefly touch on it that uh, that we had with the state. They're enthused about creating a different parking area in the future um up above that would in a joint parking area with us that would happen sometime in the future but we don't know well there's all money problems that would likely involved that would likely involve upgrading the road whether we would actually make it a class three road or whether we would just improve probably more likely we would just improve uh the class four road to make it viable to uh, to drive up there. Yeah. But all, all that's all that stuff is down the road. What we're doing is trying to make the situation better and spend a little money and a little time. Yeah. Great. OK, so I, I might as well continue here because I don't think sure. we're going to hear from Paul. Yeah. Uh, we had that uh, the forum, uh, town highway forum. Overall, it was a it was a good meeting. Um, there was a lot that came out of it. Paul was going to talk about a bunch of the items, and and uh, he took that very serious, and he thought that was a a good meeting. Um, we had a lot of suggestions about different things. Uh, I won't go into all of the particulars, but I will say one thing on my part, uh, one of the suggestions that came out and that was actually Vic Dwyer said they thought that I should maybe at, uh, at our select board meetings, give a brief update of what the town highway crew is doing or what they're doing over the next two weeks or what they have been doing. And I thought that was a good idea. So I'm just gonna, briefly touch on that. And uh, I'm going to let Paul respond uh, to these other items and that'll probably be at a future date. Uh, so anyway, right now the town crew is still working up at our pit. We've been doing some clearing, uh, trying to get ready for uh, somebody to come in there and screen sand. I met with Fred McCullough up there today. Peter was up there uh, so that he could come in and we talked about how we go about doing the stuff. Uh, so we're working in the pit up there still to try to get, get that ready for that screening process. And before we leave the pit, uh, we had planned on doing that little parking area and then going up and doing the parking area for the state, expanding that one. So that's where we're gonna be over the next, over the next week. Uh, roughly, um, we are going to be getting some chloride in and we're going to be that grader is going to have to go out there. But until we get our chloride in, uh, we just can't grade the roads. Uh, they'd be just nothing but dust. So, but we do have a load of chloride coming in. And as soon as we get that in, we'll be grading roads and chloride. In. So, Steve, um, do we get reimbursed by the state for fixing up that um, that uh, wildlife uh, area parking no we're just doing it because yes because i i i don't I, I mean it's hard to tell who is using that parking area but since we have our um town forest up there the use of that parking area has increased and increased and increased and people are walking up there so 
Um, I, it's probably more from our use than the wildlife management. And the other thing we use it for is it's our snowplow turnaround. Yes. So in the winter time, if they're winter hikers up there and they're parking in there, it creates a problem because the truck can't turn around, essentially. Yeah. Can I ask so, a question? Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Steve, do you, um, when you say you're screening sand, I want to put in the minutes what, why you're screening sand. Uh, because we uh, use about 5,000 yards at a minimum of, of sand that we buy every year. Okay. So we're getting this out of the pit rather than buying it. Okay. For, for the roads in the winter? For the roads for the winter, yes. Where do you store it? We will store the sand uh, over at our town garage, like normal. We may have a, a small stockpile left there at the pit also, but uh, we plan on taking what we use normally over to pit over to the town garage. So instead of instead of incurring the cost to where did we get the sand last year, Steve? Uh, Barons. Right. And how far yeah. is Barron's from our town garage? Oh, it's, uh, I'll do it in truck time because that's what, <laughs> that's what we pay for. So it's about an hour and 15 to an hour, 20 minute round trip. So it's going to be what, 20 or 25 minutes, half an hour from our pit to the town garage? Roughly, yes. Half yeah. hour round trip. So that's a big savings. Plus, we won't be we won't be paying for the material. We have the material. We have the material. So we're going to get a thousand yards from you think from the pit. Pardon? You'll get all of the five thousand yards we need that's, from. That's, pit. Yes, that's our intention, and I think that's uh, reasonable. I think we can get more than that, but that's what we need for uh, one year's supply. Hmm. Great. Thank you. I just didn't know what you were doing there. Okay. So you were talking, Steve, about the June 6th meeting that you and Paul had with the public, weren't you? Or had I jumped ahead? Mm -hmm. What about it? Was there anything else you wanted to add about no, that meeting? No, Paul had had written up some stuff and uh, some stuff that came out of the meeting. Uh, like I said, it was a, uh, overall, it was a very positive meeting. Uh, it w didn't go exactly as uh, we had planned, but that doesn't matter. It still came out a very positive meeting. Uh, there was uh, about 15 people there all together, counting Paul and I. Uh, so it was a good meeting. And uh, like I said, Paul had a few of the items that were there and he was going to address those. He's got his notes for that. So I'm not going to jump into that. Um, I will just try to keep the uh, select board apprised of what, where we're headed and what we're doing. And I, I think that Vic's suggestion was uh, pretty good. So I'll try to do that. And if you have questions. Sarah, if you would, if you would make it our practice to make a regular agenda item highway update or some such thing, that'd be great. Yep, yep. I think it's great. We'll just have treasures update. We'll have highway updates. It's a great idea. Yep. yep. Perfect. Well, Steve, what was Vic's idea that um, you said was a good idea? What we were talking about, Mary. <laughs> what we're just, what we're talking well, about. I you guess know, that we to, have an update every yes, week. Yes, exactly. Week. As a regular part of our, as a regular part of our meeting. Yeah. All right, that's that. I like it too. Okay, Dorinda, you all warmed up and ready to go? Where is she? You better unmute yourself first. Well, now it works. There you go. <clears throat> so we got a small pile of stuff here. Um, I'll start with the RB technology bill that I sent you guys today. Yep. Yeah. I'm not really comfortable signing off on this um, because I think there was several 
concerns in going through this. Um, Sarah went through it and kind of made notes of the ones she was concerned about. I made notes on a couple of things here that um, I just think that this is a lot of money for what was actually done and the time put into it. Um, I mean, we're at $13,000 in our computer budget. And I, without actually breaking out the um, support services, I know just what we pay monthly is $700 a month um, for support services. And yet we turn around and get bills for quite a bit of stuff as well. So um, I, with your approval, it'll get paid, but I just think it's something you guys should be looking at and see what all the work was that was done. I will say the accounting computer is still not 100%. Um, the printers didn't work when it was first installed. Only tried to install the printers. We couldn't get access to the server to install the printers. Um, they should never have walked away from the office without knowing if the computers worked. Um, so she sat there and couldn't run checks. We, um, then when we finally got Holland to um, dial in on this, he couldn't even get access to the admin portion and had to reset all the passwords. And it's just a concern, I think. So, Phil, my understanding is that the that the bookkeeping computer is up and going now. Correct? I, it's as far as I know. I I don't know. Is it? She's still missing all of her. She can has no Google Sheets or anything like that to do any of her spreadsheets. Um, I think there was a part where there was no key to install that or something. I gave like her the key and then she decided she was uncomfortable installing it. She's uncomfortable because of everything that happens that uh, she doesn't want to be held responsible because there's been so many issues with the computer. I mean, every morning we were getting a backup issue. Um, we finally got that resolved. Um, but it's anything several you do to get this all done. But did the backup issue have anything to do with the new computer installation? It said partially. Partially. Okay. And um, so then what were the other parts that were holding up the backup? I guess part, the other part of it had something to do with the computer system moving upstairs. Oh. Which was something that we're being billed for through RB Technologies for their insight on how to do it. Okay. Um, I'll come down and install the, the key. I just heard from Amy today that she, I guess she actually entered it and then took it out. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable setting it up. Um, I was I was trying I was looking through this invoice and I, I agree with you. There's some things that seem a little bit um, a little bit iffy, um, especially the the stuff around moving up stairs. But the hang on, just I'm trying to go through the invoice on my phone while I'm on on this call. So the invoice actually netted out at. One hundred forty-six dollars. Yeah, right. Right, but they used up all of the monthly services we've been accruing. So that means that um, now we have no bank of support services. But yeah, but, this, but all I'm saying is that's that's the whole concept of this: is when we have something big, we use it up, then we build it up again. I get that, but I think there's things like, I mean. There was an initial call about um, an inquiry about we had received something from our bank saying that if we had a certain kind of um, 
it was some kind of firewall or something like that, that we would not have access to the bank. I contacted them on it. They came back and said, oh, I think you'll be all right. If, you know, but it was no security there. So I contacted Paul up still. He said that the new computer was going to be installed. Just me contacting Colin to ask him if that was true. When was this going to be installed? He then charged thirty-two fifty just to answer me back to tell me when it was going to be installed. Those are the kind of bills that right. I don't think we should be incurring. I yeah. mean, to ask a question, thirty-two fifty. They did back out two and a half hours of time. So oh, no, I'm no wondering if that's what they went through and looked at stuff like that and why they backed out those two and a half hours and put them in as broad as pro bono. I guess what this, what this brings up to me is if it's going to be, and I don't know what the right way to do this is, whether, whether Phil should review these bills and then approve them uh, for Dorinda to pay, or whether we should have Dorinda wrangle with RB. Um, it's a it's a tough situation, but we need to have we need to have one point of one point of contact. The um, I got into it with them a little um, when uh, what we originally were scheduled, I think, for a Thursday to do that installation. And um, Holland actually called me and said, oh, you know, it started going through this stuff and expected me to go down to the town office and set up all the computer and install remote software so they could work remotely. And I, I had to admit, I got pretty angry um, about who was being tech support and who was getting paid for it. So um, I basically put a halt to everything for that day, basically said, I'm not doing this, okay? This is your job. I am not doing this. You guys need to make a decision and you need to make it right now as to whether or not you want to be tech support. Then Jared called me back and I was still pretty hot because it took them over an hour to decide whether or not they wanted to continue to do that, which kind of amazed me. They must've actually sat around and talked about it for a while. Um, Jared called back, we had a, a good discussion. He did a lot of, of throwing himself under the bus, um, and, but also trying to make excuses about, well, you know, we're not going on site. And I said, well, you know, I'm sorry, that's what you do. Um, you know, to actually call up a select board member and say, will you go down and set up this computer and install all this remote software so that I can then charge you to set it up seemed kind of ludicrous to me. Uh, we finally did get to the point where uh, he did show up on um, the did front and did, you know, did the installation, but you're right, Durand, if there's stuff that's not right, that's a concern. You know, so uh, we do need to address that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, Peter and I have had ongoing discussions about this stuff from time to time, and, and um, I don't think either of us has a, a really good answer right now. But we're also in a, we're kind of squeezed a bit right now. Wilson, where's Angela? The, um, you know, with the Windows 8 stuff coming right down to past due, essentially, um, you know, we had a plan, COVID-19 happened, it messed us up. We've also had to spend a lot of money to dig ourselves out of that hole of having some very old um, operating systems that should have been replaced a long time ago. Um, and I don't know whether, you know, Probably they should have been making recommendations about that stuff a while ago. I don't recall anything since I've been on the board, uh, but probably along there somewhere, taking the position says you, you've got to upgrade these machines. So we're in that process now. Uh, unfortunately, it's 
just not going very smoothly. Um, the public computers here, uh, Paul is going to come in Friday and is going to set that up. That should be up and running. And I'll, I'll have to talk to him while he's there to make sure. And, I, and then if he's there, if, if, if you or Amy can give me a list of issues that remain on that treasurer's computer, I can make sure he addresses those while he's there. Well, the I think those have been done now, except for the fact of her not having access to these Google Sheets. But my point was when they did the installation, the, the first thing you think of, you have to print from it. And, you know, they walked away and the printer wasn't working. <laughs> right. Me, that was, we shouldn't have had to call them back and yeah. sit there and wait for them to respond to our ticket. And... You know, she sat there and couldn't print it. Anyway. Right. right. Um, I mean, I looked over Holland's notes and he, you know, he said that Amy said she would install the printers. Unfortunately, he accepted that as an answer. He shouldn't have. He should have said, no, I'm sorry. I'll, I'm here. I'm installing the printers. That's my job. You know, I'm going to do it. But he didn't. He, he, he went with, you know, what she was saying. Oh, so. How much, just, just backing up a little bit. And, you know, hey, we all supported this. We all thought we were doing the right thing at the time. And, and Phil, I appreciate all very much all the time and energy you put into this. But, you know, I, I unfortunately think that part of this problem is when we went out of the loop and purchased these computers on our own. And I know we saved some money doing that. But my experience all the years with computers is when you've got a support group working for you, you let them acquire the computers, they set them up, they install them, and they're 100% accountable for it. And if they screw it up, then you fire them. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, if, if we're going to keep doing business with, with RB, we certainly have to have some kind of a come to Jesus meeting. But Absolutely. I think I think on balance, and I know there was, you know, it's annoying when you come in and you can't print. It's very annoying when you come in and you can't log into your computer. Um, but the fact is, I think our new financial arrangement is working. The fact that we were able to bank enough hours that it took care of all that. And yeah, we can we can argue about an hour here and an hour there, but I don't think that's a productive use of our time. Yeah. Really what we want to have is a reliable, working, up-to-date computer network. And we've I agree, we've we've suffered because we didn't uh, we didn't update soon enough and fast enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um the um, the Lister's computer, as far as I understand it, is set up and ready to go, but waiting for Amy to give us the go-ahead because she didn't want to do anything until she lodged the grand list. I think was my understanding. Is that okay. they were concerned that they didn't want to? It, it was such timing they didn't want to upset anything anywhere and lose any kind of data or not have access to the data. Yeah, that makes makes perfect sense when you've got some mission critical stuff so that whenever she's ready to go that should be able to be done she also wanted us to hold off on the firewall update because they had sent a ticket on that and so sure we'll put that on hold till then i mean there's some other stuff here just um quickly the um who's my train of thought uh the wireless access point they we got a message from Holland, I guess, saying that that is at end of life that needs to be replaced. I asked them for a quote. Uh, they came in around 150, and then I asked them for what it was because I wanted to see the specs. And <clears throat> I think it's a ubiquity, which is a good, you know, commercial level uh, access point. And that's probably something we should go ahead and do. Um, is that for them to have access? As for us to have wireless access in the office. Oh, wireless access. Okay. Okay. Um, the Paul's computer is is another another situation. I mean, he's been a trooper moving over to the Chromebook, and he's he's really starting to get the hang of it. Um, in the midst of that, or kind of at the end of it, the computer just gave up the ghost, and. Um, it was funny because we he had gone back and forth and asked me to go up and look at it. That's the way to, in my mind, I'm driving up there and I'm saying, well, 
push the start button, you know, <laughs> and no, no, it died. So I had got, I, I got, I think most of his data <clears throat> off the old computer. I know I did not get his email archive files because they, they're in a different place and they just didn't come over. So with, with that, I think we're going to need to pull the hard drive out of that old computer take it to someplace like Staples where they will just clone it and give us a copy on uh, DVDs or something like that so that I can go through with Paul. We can make sure we've got all of his stuff because he does need some of that email archive. Um, That's not that expensive though, is it? The printer he has is the old school type that has to be connected to the computer. He's now with the Chromebook needs something wireless Printers are not terribly expensive. I think I can find something at Staples that'll give him what he needs. And we've chatted about that. So, you know, we've got a few other expenses there. Um, and then I think once we get past that, uh, Dorinda, we still have your laptop uh, to set up. And I think you and Amy, were going to share that. But we're not completely out of the woods yet. And you're right. I think, Peter, you said, you know, come to Jesus moment. Uh, we probably need to... Uh, have that. Liz, did you have a question for me? Well, not really a question. I just wanted to um, to add that um, I did have a conversation with um, Ruben Bennett. And Phil, I'm sorry I never called you back. I got sidetracked with all this work stuff and I totally forgot. <laughs> no anyway, he, he had just been, um, you know, he reached out because he felt like he, he would like to come to a select board meeting and have a meeting, um, have a, you know, a regular public meeting, not something offline. Um, and, um, and just, you know, have this opportunity to have, you know, a, a deeper discussion about, you know, our expectations um, with having them as a, um, a as, as our tech group and, you know, maybe some places where we, we feel like we either haven't been getting enough support um, or, you know, and allowing them to, to give us, you know, feedback on, on where it's been maybe challenging, you know, working with us in terms of, you um, you know, having sort of too many, too many uh, techs in the kitchen kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, um, so anyway, Ruben is, is, is basically at our disposal. He'll come to a meeting if we want to put him on the agenda. Good. I think we should. Any other, any other tech questions that I probably can't answer anyway, but. <laughs> the email is coming, right? Yeah. Once everything else gets done, that, that'll be the frosting on the cake, so. Okay. I just, what I, I, I and, and Phil, I, I really appreciate all the, all the work you've done and the time you've spent, I can't even imagine. But we need to be paying these guys to do this. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we saved some money. I hope we saved some money. I think we're driving you crazy, which we don't mean to do. Um, and I don't think it's fair for you to be in the middle of this. I, I think we, we say to them, look, boys, you do it until you screw up. And we expect you to give us good prices and good service. And, you know, if you can do that, that's great. If you can't, then we need to find somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. But I but I think having us get and I and I mean I've made this mistake in my in my past life getting way too involved in these kind of things myself and in in the end it's 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 a problem. Yeah, definitely. So that's my that's my recommendation. But I think the idea of having him come to a to a board meeting first and yes, you know, maybe we need maybe we need a few more hours. I don't know, but uh, the fact that we came out within $146 or whatever it is on this deal, I think is uh, pretty good because it's a lot of stuff and we're not quite there yet. I know that. Right. Okay. Anything else, anybody? So that's permission to pay, right? That's permission to pay. Okay. Yeah. It's either's position. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> well, we have, it's not on the, it's not on the order, right? No, it's not on the order yet. Nope. But I'll get it in there for the next. I'll get it in there for the next one. Okay. Okay. Um, the next. Dorinda, before we move on, did you? Yeah. I forwarded you the invoice from Dell for the public computer. Yes, that is in the payables. I think tonight. Excellent. Yeah. Um, 
The next one is uh, I sent you some emails regarding the fire department. And we just got another one. So yeah. Yeah. Another little um, surprise. Um, so I, I don't know if I have to hash it out with you or not, but I was questioning why the town paid for the um, thermal imaging camera when we had been told in December that was something the department was going to pay for. Um, so I reached out to Marge and asked if this was an oversight or something. And so that was the email I got back. Yeah. So again, my question is um, twofold. It's um, technically the purchases um, of equipment is over budget. Um, they sent us a, a, an invoice that they want paid in this current year for um, some breathing uh, a cylinder for the FCBA that is won't be here for 10 weeks. Um, but they want to pay for it out of the budget that's ending in two weeks. And then we got that new email tonight, uh, today for an expected $4,000 bill. So, so I before the, before the $4,000 mm -hmm. with the, with the tanks and the contribution to the camera, overall, they would still be below their budget. They would be overspent on their equipment account, but they would be low their total projected budget, correct? Right. So in the financials that you got tonight, it doesn't include the cylinders, which they did purchase two cylinders back in December, and we paid for them in January. So they have already purchased two of them so far in this um, year. And now they're asking for these other two. And then, um, so that the second one though is not these last two are not in the financials. So they have seven thousand and some dollars left in their budget for the remainder of the year. But this, they've got but they've got a four thousand dollar engine repair coming. And then and this fifteen hundred for those cylinders, but they would still be below their total. I don't like the don't get me wrong, I don't like the idea of paying for something 10 weeks in advance before we even get it, just so they can use up the money in their budget. <laughs> but I thought that was not like what Dorinda said, this was not even like, this is their own petty cash checking account. Don't we not have access to that? Isn't that something different? We don't have access to their, their account. And I thought that camera was coming from their own money, not from the not from their budget they paid, of repairs. They paid the down payment and billed us for the balance. You mean the Reynolds bill? Seven thousand dollar camera. For but what? we never agreed to it. We never well, agreed. Just just to be clear, guys, and you know, I, I think we are changing the changing the way we operate, but yeah. In the past, what I mean, Marge is correct. In the past, what we've told them is, you know, do the best job you can to estimate your expenses and then come out within your budget. But we don't care that much if you're over on, on one line item and under on the other line item. And that's that's her point of view. If we don't want her to do that, if we want to hold their feet to the fire and say, if you have $3,000 in your equipment budget, that's all you get. That's a different way of operating than we've been operating. So I, you know, the, the problem is it's just like, it's just like the highway budget. It's absolutely impossible to project what the equipment repairs are going to be. The equipment purchases for new equipment. Yes, they should be able to project that. But, you know, when the, when the turbocharger goes on the, on the fire truck, guess what? You got to replace it and you got to find the money somewhere. So, I mean, this, this to me all gets back to the whole issue of the fire department and how we operate with them and everything else. But I, I don't think this is the time to say, yeah, that's fine. no, we expect you to, to live within each individual line item. I think we say, and, and we can decide whether we want to pay 10 weeks ahead for those air cylinders. I don't like that very much. But the bottom line is it looks to me like, this is what I was looking at this afternoon, that with that, with that truck repair and with, the camera purchase 
they're still under their oh. total budget. Okay. But so I, and you know, I, I'm sorry, I get so confused about fiscal years because I deal with two fiscal years and ours is July 1, right? This is for the right. next. So, yes. so they're spending, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And this is not untypical of what they've done in the past. They hold on to their money and then in the yeah. last quarter of the year they spend it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm sorry, I got confused. No, that's okay. Is so I there. Know, and I know the whole thing annoys Dorinda and I don't, and I don't blame her, but. I, I think Marge is trying to be straight with us. and It's not an annoyance. It's just, uh, I don't feel my job as treasurer is to bring these things to your attention when they're over budget or not what we're expecting to pay. And that's why I'm just asking you if it's okay to follow through it. I not my money. Well, and I will say that as someone who who trained with the fire department on that one day where I had to crawl in a smoke filled building, you can't see anything, <laughs> literally. And so these cameras are apparently supposed to help find people, right? Like find bodies. So I think that it's, I'm glad we have one. I, I just want to go back to the air cylinders again. So they... They're buying them and they're basically prepaying for them. They won't take delivery until in the next fiscal year. Right. They'll take them after. They said that it, they're 10 weeks out or something like that. Um, but Dorinda, are these the fancy air cylinders or are these to re to just fill up the regular, those backpacks that they have now? Remember how they want to get those yeah, new ones that are, are super expensive? No, these are the 30 minute. Um, okay. What is the TSI air tanks. Okay. I thought we had told them they couldn't get the air cylinders. No, those are the fancy ones. Yeah, that was the turnout gear or something, not turnout gear, but those are the stock packs or something like that that were really expensive. They're like 15 grand each or something like that. So, and then, uh, We, the camera thing, we're going to let the camera thing go, even though yes. they said they pay for it themselves. Well, they are paying for some of it. Well, I thought they said they pay for the whole thing themselves. Maybe they spent the money on something else. Yeah. Okay. So the, the problem, yeah. is, the problem yeah. is, Mary, they, they manage their budget, you know, and they make, they make decisions about how they spend the money and they don't consult with us. <laughs> and if we want them to consult with us, we have to devise some kind of a system where they're going to report to us before they do this stuff. That's another subject. That's another subject. Oh, that's, a, that's a long discussion. That's yeah. a question we keep coming back to. It's well. not like, <laughs> I want to be careful how I say this. It's not like the money is being disappearing. It's not like they're spending it on, you know, training sessions in the South Seas. I don't doubt for a minute this is stuff they need and they should have. Um, it's just, you know, it's our money and they spend it. And I know that's annoying. Well, I think it's, it comes down to, you know, what we've talked about before. It makes for a very difficult relationship when you have <clears throat> a crucial service in town being run by uh, a nonprofit corporation. Right. Right. <clears throat> Instead of it being governmental. And they're not accountable to us. All right. Well, they're accountable, but only in the only in the big picture where we yep. cut off their funding. Right. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, and I saw all those all those stipends. I've never liked those stipends either. I don't get a stipend. I don't like the stipends either. Never did. Yeah. Why do you uh, like the let's, let's, let's table this. Let's table this for tonight. I mean, I, I think we've got what we've got to render unless anybody disagrees. Yeah. And I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Um, the question, the question I have is: so, what do we have? What do we have left to pay between now and the end of the year? We have what? One more payroll. We have one more payroll. We probably will have. Um, power bills that will affect all the departments, telephone bills that will affect all departments, um, any kind of fuel, anything like that. Anything all right. That, 
Anything that has a June date on it will get approved back, yeah. even if we keep the bill after July one. Well, we're going to be we're going to be in the hole. It's a little hard to tell how much, but clearly we're going to be in the hole. But it's not going to be not going to be horrible, I don't think, especially considering we had that sixty-two thousand dollar unanticipated truck repair. So, you know, Dorinda, how did we okay. do with tax uh, payments? Um, we did okay. There's there was a big number left at the end. Um, let's see. Yeah. Dorinda, I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm looking at my paperwork. I don't have the number readily available, um, but it was a significant number. Some of it was just people oversight that it wasn't because they chose not to pay it. Some of it was, oops, I missed it. Um, but we do have a significant number out there left to collect. That you still have to collect. Yeah. And have they been in touch with you? Like saying, I can't afford to because I lost my job or, or did well, they just. I'm no longer the delinquent tax collector. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you I forgot did. about that. Oh, so her smile when she says that. I did talk with Dave Smith about it. And um, he did send out a letter along with the late notices. I don't think he's gotten a lot of feedback. I do know that some people called in and said, oops. Um, but that I haven't gotten into the actual detail. Maybe Sarah knows more. We got a, we got a whole bunch of, um, I got a whole bunch of calls last week followed by payments on Monday. We never get, we never get any mail on Tuesday, but they were all people who, uh, I mean, they had their pink slips in the letter. So obviously people are paying. We have, I, my knowledge, we have not received any calls from people saying, I can't pay my taxes, it's a hardship. Because what I would suggest too, if someone does call, um, you know, we still have, you know, I wanna, it's not a lot of money, but it's like 4,000 or 5,000 left in our middle sex fund that we're giving out $200 grants to people. Um, and, you know, we have given out quite a few, like 25, I would say. Liz, are um, you talking about capstone or you're talking about town money? No, I'm talking about the town, the middle sex, that little pot of money that we have. We've given out grants to, to folks. It's not a lot, $200, but, you know, it could be that that's going to help them pay for groceries so they can pay for taxes. So if someone does call to say, I'm having trouble paying my taxes, you should you should let them know about the this the it's really the food shelf money that we okay, have. That was my into concern. My grant. concern was whether or not you were talking about actually town funds. No, 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 no. Just as the okay. middle sex food shelf money. Wow. Okay. That that's we're granting out. Donations. That's what? from private that's from private yes, from donations. Yes, from private donations. Yep. Yep. And we're just giving out, you know, checks, no questions asked for people that need it. So you know, some people it have been, most people have heard about it on Front Porch Forum or have been referred to it, um, but um, some people might not know that it exists and it may be very useful to them. You you did, uh, there was an announcement about a month ago, wasn't there? When, a couple of um, announcements on Front Porch Forum. Yeah, it's Dave Carkey who's managing the, um, the grant distribution. Anything else, Gernda? No, I think that took care of my file. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So we have uh, just taking it in order here. Approval of the May 19 minutes. Do we Peter, Peter, my kids are back, and uh, I don't need you. Don't need my vote on any of these things. So I think I'm going to get off, and my computer is only down to nine percent anyway. Okay, Mary. Thank you. Bye, Mary. Thanks. Have fun with your kids. Thank you. Motion on the minutes? Yeah. I'll make a move. Uh, I'll second Steve's motion. <laughs> okay, all, in, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Okay, we've approved the minutes. Wait, there are two sets, two sets of minutes, my, May 19th and May 21st. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to just, though, every, you, you, everybody was there for both. Do you just want to yeah. both? Well, okay. just say we approve both of them. Yeah. Uh, Thank yeah. you.
and everybody's favorite subject, the Washington <laughs> County Sheriff's contract for the upcoming year. Yeah. I Do feel like the place. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like this is Groundhog Day. Did everybody see that movie? Yeah. Here we are again. We haven't gone anywhere. Nothing's changed. They don't <laughs> use up their money, and we're right back at it again. And we have no Great place surprise. else to go. <laughs> and guess what? The sheriff's department is more behind and has more work and more stuff to do, and it's only going to be worse. So I saw them during COVID, like outside Romney. I'm like, nobody's driving. What What are you doing? <laughs> nah. it you know, it is what it is, guys. I I don't know. I mean. We, we hear from people that they want speed enforcement. We try and hold their feet to the fire, but they can only do what they can do. And we're not the top priority, needless to say, so. It's fine, I, I approve it. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, you're gonna motion. Okay, motion. I move that we approve the, the sheriff's um, plan for next year. Contract. 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 I'm just going to throw in this $7,500 and do the math, okay? Yep. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Steve, did you second that? I did. No. No. Hold it. Uh, do I have your permission to sign on the board's behalf? I will get this DocuSign thing undone, but. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, Sharon, that's, a, that's a pretty cool little program. Yeah, I just don't know how to take things like that and put it into, you know, how to transfer paper, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. Hey, I've been e-signing so much stuff, God only knows what I've done. I probably bought a few missiles and maybe a nuclear power plant or two. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Who knows? So what do we think? What do we think? What do we think about starting real meetings again? A little soon, a little early? Governor hasn't lifted that restriction. I don't think that's a wise idea. No other town is doing that. I am not oh, comfortable. Yeah. I am a type A blood and I'm at risk of dying on Me a ventilator. Too. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Zoom around it is then. I, I agree. I want to be safe. I mean, we could have, we could plan to have a meeting outside, I suppose, but that sounds a little crazy. This this actually does work. Yeah. Could I, could I uh, say something? As yeah. a citizen, it's it's really easy to participate in meetings when they're on Zoom. Yes, yeah. I agree. I, we have so many more people coming to our meetings than ever. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's we really cool. Oh, no, I know. That's 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 definitely that's definitely been the uh, been the highlight of this. And I, I mean, it must must be we're unfriendly when people come down to the town hall. I don't know. They don't seem to come. But they like to Zoom with us. So. No, you guys are always friendly. It's just um, there's just like a barrier to like driving in and going into like a formal meeting and it feels like a little nerve wracking and like to be on zoom is just like it's just much easier to listen and participate so we're very appreciative good oh i appreciate okay. that i i really do and and we like we like having people here so well and even if we do move to um you know going back to meetings it we can always have it still be zoom like you can have a computer and people could zoom in if they want to exactly yeah. that's a really good point yeah, I mean that's what I was that's what I was going to suggest that we make this our practice, and then and then guess what? If a board member's out of town, like I've been known to do sometimes, they can zoom in too. So and right, yep. No, I I think uh, I think it's all good. I think it's all good. Well, I'm off. I'm off to my uh, my cocktails with the motorcycle boys. Important important Come business. <laughs> so I am ready to. Uh, Adjourn. Including, including, we were going to invite Sarah to our motorcycle meeting, but we decided we wanted her to get a little more practice on her scooter first. Did Did you get your pink helmet? All I could get was a black helmet with pink, uh, pink waves on it. Is it um Jessica? metal like a helmet? <laughs> is it a moped, Sarah, or what is it's it? Forty nine. It's forty nine point seven cc. So it's. I don't need a license. I'm just a hazard. Oh, okay. I'm just a hazard. <laughs> it's fine. It's a little uh, Molly Supel is a little scary, but what's really going to yeah. be scary is when they grade the roads. That's going to be totally yes. Hard. Yeah, you're going to go really slowly. That for a few days when they grade well, the roads. You look like you are having a good time anyway, Sarah. That was my big trip to your house, Steve. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's oh day God. out.
<laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to adjourn right. the. Uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you Yay. all. Hey, bye, everybody. Thank you, uh, thank you, guests. Okay. Have bye, a great everybody. Bye, bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. bye.